Welcome to the National Soccer Coaches Association of America Winter Webinar Series. My name is David Newberry and I'm the coordinator of the NSCAA's Club Standards Project, an initiative designed to raise the performance of coaches and players one club at a time. Since May 2012, we have had over 800 clubs join the project, representing over 500,000 players and 48,000 coaches. The NSCAA is delighted tonight to have Brian Scales, the Director of Youth Development for the New England Revolution, to present today's topic, MLS Academy, Talent Identification and Development. In addition to the club's youth development program, Brian also serves as the head coach of the under-16 squad and has advanced the playoffs of the prestigious U.S. Soccer Development Academy each of the last three seasons. Brian oversees the entire youth development program, including the day-to-day -day management of the Revolution's under-18, under-16, and under-14 teams. He also works directly with the Revolution's technical staff and coordinates the first team head, with the first team's head coach to call up youth players to train with the first team squad or play with the reserves. Brian came to the Revolution from UMass Lowell where he was the school's head soccer coach and had over 15 years coaching career as the assistant and head coach of Cornell. Brian has, has also been the assistant coach of the U.S. Boys Under-15 National Team and the Development Academy Scout for U.S. Soccer. Brian also holds the Premier, the Advanced National, and the National Diplomas from the NSCAA. And welcome for the second time in 24 hours, Brian, to the presentation. Thank you, Dave. Evening, everybody. Thanks for joining in. From uh, I come to you from dreary New England. Um, hopefully, at least it's not snowing, so that's good. Uh, but let's get started. So, uh, no, thanks again for joining in. Uh, it was a good session that we had yesterday, uh, and happy to go over this stuff again. Hopefully it's not redundant for, for some people who are back on. But, uh, yeah, we'll start with the first slide here. So, what I wanted to do is just give everybody an overview and structure of our academy here. Um, we're a, a fully funded academy. You can see our development pyramid here with, uh, with obviously the first team at the very top of the, uh, of the pyramid. Uh, everything funnels towards the first team here. Uh, we have our player development programs which make up the base of our pyramid. We've got our regional development schools, uh, our residential academy, revolution training centers uh, that filter into our academy teams at the 14, 16, and 18 uh, age groups and then into uh, what was our reserve team and into our first team. Our reserve team, uh, the structure will be a little bit different this year uh, because we've not, we, we won't have a reserve team. Uh, we've entered into an affiliation with the Rochester Rhinos of the USL Pro League. So what will happen is players who are on the roster for the first team, uh, four or five players will be loaned out to Rochester, which uh, we're excited about to have which will probably open up some spots here for our academy players to get in uh, more often and train with the first team. But, uh, but you can see our pyramid here. College soccer is obviously on the outside, but we expect our players to go, uh, the majority of our players to go into college soccer and then through college soccer, uh, either into our reserve team or up into the first team. So our club philosophy. Uh, like I said before, we're a fully funded MLS uh, development program, youth development program. Uh, we've got three teams, uh, roughly 60 kids. Uh, all of them play for free. Uh, all of their expenses are covered, travel, uniforms, uh, salaries, and all that. Um, so we're a fully funded MLS youth program. Uh, and we have a certain way that we feel uh, is important to develop young soccer players. We train and expect our guys to uh, exhibit the uh, possession-oriented style of play, uh, taking care of the ball, being able to pass and move. Uh, we feel that's the best way for them to develop and to progress uh, both into college soccer and then into the first team or into the U.S. national teams. So we want to make sure that it's a professional environment uh, both on and off the field for our guys uh, and parents, families. And we want to make sure that the connection with our first team um, 
is seamless, and that's of paramount importance. So critical to our program is our scouting network. So we typically have uh, players from eastern New England within our program, um, roughly 75 miles from our stadium. Those are the restrictions that MLS has set on, uh, on our academy to, to protect uh, what we would call homegrown players. So we have five full-time staff uh, and 20 part-time who are out watching games, uh, looking for players, watching teams play, um, and it's an important, uh, an important part of our program, critical to, su to the success. So one of the important things is that you have a good soccer gauge. Uh, and when we talk about the soccer gauge, um, trying to look at players, especially the, the young players, uh, and see how they'll project out over time, which is a difficult thing to do. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, we look for players who have the highest potential talent, uh, but we think their best soccer is still ahead of them. So we make it very clear with our scouts and with our staff that we want to have a balanced professional approach uh, when we look at players. So instead of coming back to the office and telling, telling me we've got the next Messi, um, give us what he can do well, things that he needs to work on, what his character looks like, does he fit into our academy, the mentality that he has, uh, is he the right fit? And so when we watch players, we want to see them play a number of times uh, so that we don't take uh, snapshots of these players. Uh, that's really important. That's when we start to make mistakes, when we take quick snapshots. Uh, we want to see these players again and again. So we play our home games and train here at Gillette Stadium, uh, home of the New England Revolution, uh, and we even let the Patriots play here as well. Uh, but we've got uh, the Dana-Farber Fieldhouse, you can see on the left, uh, and that's the Patriots practice facility up top next to the Fieldhouse. Um, we have the uh, lower practice field, which is where our first team plays, and we also have Gillette Stadium there, 67,000 seat stadium. Uh, that we play the majority of our games in, which is a great atmosphere and environment for our players and, and visiting teams and families to come into. So that's exciting for our guys. Now, the regional development schools are uh, an important component to our development pyramid. So it's an on-site program which takes place throughout the course of the year. It's a paid program. Uh, the players come in on Mondays and Fridays and are trained and evaluated by our academy staff. Uh, the teams are split up, the players are split up according to their birth year, uh, and we get a good chance to see some of the top kids from New England come in so that they can be evaluated and trained uh, and developed uh, eventually for our academy teams. So the top players from these RDS programs will filter into what we call a Revolution Training Center. And the Revolution Training Center is a free program. Uh, it's for players I'd say 11 to 15 years old, uh, and it's participation by invitation only from our scouts, from our coaches, uh, from recommendations from club coaches that, that, uh, that we have relationships with. And the players come in, and we put them through a training session with the other top players here at Gillette Stadium uh, with our academy staff, our full-time academy staff, and our part-time academy staff. So we get a chance to do this roughly three or four times a year uh, so that we can see and keep track of players uh, here in New England and see how they would do with our academy teams. We also have our residential academy, which takes place at Dean College in the summertime. Um, this is the second year that we've done this, uh, our residential academy. It's a four-day overnight training camp. Um, and it's important to, uh, to have all of our academy staff there. We can live with the players, uh, eat with the players, get to know those guys, and get a good idea of who they are as both people and soccer players, uh, have some fun with them, uh, put them into a competitive environment and challenging training sessions, uh, and start to get a good feel for uh, what type of kids they are. So it's a, this is an important uh, event for us in the summertime and uh, was very successful last year both um, on the field and off the field, and I think the families really enjoyed it. I know the staff did. So uh, we get into expectations and in building our environment, which is a critical meeting that we have with the parents and the players at the beginning of the year. Uh, we set out the expectations for 
what we expect as far as professionalism for both players and parents, um, how we expect the players to um, conduct themselves at home, in the community, at schools, when they travel, um, how they train, how they take care of their bodies, how they communicate with their coaches, how they communicate with college coaches. Uh, it's all very important to, in the process. And we make very clear to the parents that this uh, academy and this environment is a player-centric environment. So the parents are there to support, families are there to provide support, uh, but this is, a, this is an environment where we, we expect the players to step up, the players to be the primary contact, the primary beneficiary of the training sessions um, and interaction with all of the, the coaches within the, within the academy. So our training structure, when we get the players in, which is typically uh, three times a week, sometimes four times a week, we usually structure all of our training sessions into five phases. Uh, always start with a dynamic warm-up, which progresses to technical work. The sooner we can get the ball involved, the better. Uh, then we get into some sort of passing pattern or progression uh, where the players are playing short passes or distance passes, angled passes, um, and we make it more complex as we go along. Our third phase is usually some sort of a possession exercise uh, either directional possession, numbers up, numbers down, uh, transition boxes, uh, which moves into the tactical phase, which is the coach's choice of the training session, and then usually into free play at the end. But we keep our training, se uh, training sessions very structured in this format uh, and make it very clear and clean. Uh, our sessions are usually about an hour and 40, hour and 45 minutes tops. Uh, and we try to get as much work done in that hour and 45 minutes as we can. So our academy teams play in the U.S. Development Academy. There's 78 teams in the league, 12 teams in our division. Uh, there's two national events, the Winter Showcase uh, and the Playoffs slash Showcase in the summertime. We have, like I said before, three or four game, uh, three or four training sessions a week that lead up to uh, a game on the weekend. Uh, and then next year what will happen is the U14s will come online with the Development Academy. So there will be three divisions, age groups. There will be the 14s, 16s, and 18s. Uh, and that will happen in the fall. If people have questions, you can type them in the, uh, the message uh, box on the right and we'll, we'll answer them at the end. So U.S. Soccer evaluates all of its academy teams uh, with the following criteria. Player development, style of play. Uh, what the training environment is like for the players, the facilities that the club has, um, the player expense, which for us is zero, uh, the respect campaign, which is uh, you know accumulation of yellow cards and red cards, bench behavior, coaches' behavior, uh, and then an administrative uh, component. So we try to program uh, as many important things into the, to our players as possible here when it comes to strength and conditioning, nutrition, uh, video analysis. Uh, we also want to make sure that we speak to our families about uh, the college process uh, and give each of our families and players uh, written feedback and vi uh, verbal feedback so that they can get a feel for how they're doing. Our practices are closed. Uh, parents are not allowed into our practices uh, after we usually open it for the first three weeks or four weeks of the season to give them an idea of what the environment is like. But after that, uh, it's players only, um, and we want to make sure that the players are able to express themselves and play without mom and dad watching and evaluating uh, them every evening. This year we're excited about our apprentice and mentoring program. Uh, which I went into on the, on the uh, call yesterday with the first team. Uh, we're going to have players in our academy uh, team up with first team players and have uh, re develop relationships with the first team guys uh, so that they can come in on game day and help in the locker room. Uh, and it's, it's uh, almost like an old school apprentice program. So we'll see how this goes this year. We're excited about it. Last year, uh, last May, almost a year ago, we took our U16 team to Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, for a pretty uh, spectacular trip. 
We were down there for about eight days and uh, played in the Future Champions Hautang Tournament in Soweto, which was uh, just a terrific experience for our players and our staff. Uh, really enjoyed the hospitality of the South African people. Had a great, uh, great time at the tournament. Uh, did well, and it was uh, really important for our players developmentally, culturally, socially. Uh, really made a big impact on them and was a terrific trip. We're hoping that we can do it uh, more often every couple of years uh, to add that into the programming that we do with our players. So you can see here that our club commi is committed to fostering a holistic uh, environment, professional environment for our players and for our staff. Uh, we want to make sure that we're, that we're the best in player ID. Uh, putting together the best training sessions, meaningful games, uh, give them top class facilities, uh, and make sure that that connection with the first team is rock solid. We're here to develop and, and uh, make players for uh, the Revolution Senior Team. So it's an exciting uh, opportunity for these players. We also want to make sure that, that they uh, are making progress on the field so that they can play in college, uh, represent the U.S. national team programs, and hopefully, uh, eventually, someday, represent the New England Revolution senior team. We're very proud of uh, Diego Fagundes, who some of you may know, who signed uh, his professional contract as a 15-year-old kid out of our U16 team, uh, and Scott Caldwell, who was signed by the first team uh, in January after his career finished with uh, the University of Akron. Both are uh, Revolution Academy graduates, and uh, we're very excited and proud of them, and hopefully there'll be more to come here. So that kind of wraps up the, uh, the presentation, and uh, Dave will take questions as they come in here.